Do aftermarket accessories for your car that plug into the vehicle's OBD2 port cause issues and potentially damage the car? Generally, they're pretty safe, but sometimes they can cause problems. Now, OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics, and the OBD2 connector installed in newer cars allows mechanics to diagnose issues with your cars. They can plug in a scanner to read the different issues that the car is having or different codes that it's throwing, or clear the codes when they've been fixed. Now, there's a lot of third-party electronics that allow you to do the same thing to where you can also see what's going on with your car, you could change some of the car settings, or if you're doing the repairs yourself, you can clear the codes when they're done. That said, things don't always work perfectly. For example, there's a story I found on Reddit of when Chevrolet updated the protocol in some of their trucks, and this led to a variety of issues with different OBD2 accessories until they were also updated to account for the updated protocol. And so for that reason, manufacturers have to be pretty careful when they're designing these things. Now, they're popular these days in a lot of fleets where companies will install them to monitor different trucks driving around. Additionally, some insurance companies will offer accessories like this as well. And insurance companies tend to be pretty conservative, right? They're literally the ones who are gonna be paying for any sort of damage or repairs that these things could cause. And to help avoid any issues here, there's now actually regulations and standards in place that allows the OBD2 plug to provide power without damage to the vehicle or to whatever's plugged into it. For example, if the device is only plugged in to pull power, the worst case scenario is that you'll blow a fuse. If the device also has some additional communication pins, then the worst case scenario here is that there's gonna be some interference that can cause communication errors, though they should go away when the device is disconnected. And when it comes to different third-party accessories, your mileage may vary. Now, if you take a closer look at the connectors themselves, you'll see that there's 16 pins here inside the OBD2 connector. That's for not only power, but also for the data communication to transmit and receive over the vehicle's CAN bus communication system. Now, when it comes to some accessories like radar detectors and dash cams, those just need power. They don't actually need to communicate with the vehicle's CAN bus system. And so if you take a look at some of those OBD2 connectors, you'll see that they're actually much simpler. There's just pins in there for power and ground. That's it, no actual communication going on with the CAN bus system at all. Now, I've had a conversation with Ben from Safe Drive Solutions about this recently, and he's found that generally things work just fine, though he has run into two examples with European spec BMWs where the car would actually cause the dash cam to incorrectly switch between driving and parking mode. Now that said, there are some other dash cam cables that are a little different. They actually have more pins in here. This is the Thinkware cable, and the Thinkware and Blackview cables actually have eight pins here in the connector. I'm not sure what these extra communication pins are for or why they're necessary, uh, but sometimes they can cause issues. Again, Ben shared a story with somebody from up in Canada who uh, was having all sorts of issues in their Honda when they were running a Thinkware cable, and they then switched to an iRoad cable that has just the power pins, and that helped to alleviate the issues. And so for that reason, for radar detectors and dash cams, I typically prefer the cables that just have the pins there for power and ground. That's it. Now, Valentine sells an accessory called Savvy, which powers your radar detector by plugging into the vehicle's OBD2 port. And while I haven't experienced any sort of power issues when running it on my Miata, they do share a compatibility list over on their website where they discuss certain types of cars or brands of cars that can cause issues with different versions of Savvy, as well as some other accessories such as OnStar or Uconnect that can have issues when you've got Savvy plugged in. And so while there can be some compatibility issues depending on what accessory you're using and what car you're driving, uh, to be on the conservative side, I typically prefer connectors that just have your power and ground connectors and avoid any sort of data communication on the CAN bus whenever possible.